dear colleagues today, I want to talk about uh, marginal paradigms and black universes. This is uh, an issue of the series of previous lectures that was remaining and I have to prepare the lecture. So I'm going to present it again. It will be a review for you. For talk. You know the issue, but still it's going to be beneficial for a revision. So today we are going to talk about uh, introduction of uh, marginal care types, diagnosis, treatment, and also uh, introduction of like neurosis, diagnosis, and the treatment. Okay, marginal care types is uh, completely not known as the cause of marginal care types, but it is believed, it means it is still not completely clear, that is believed to be caused by hypersensitivity reaction against uh, Staphylococcus, erythrotoxins, and silvan proteins. And hypersensitivity reaction is going to occur against these two elements. Uh, and what is going to happen in the cornea, why the cornea infiltrates occur in the cornea? Uh, the antigen antibody complexes are going to be deposited in the peripheral cornea, and then you're going to see and also the lymphocytic infiltration, these lymphocytes are going to uh, migrate to the peripheral cornea and then we are going to see the typical appearance of marginal uh, infiltrates. Uh, the corneal infiltrates are going to be seen there. But still the exact cause is not clear. Uh, uh, mostly the patients uh, uh, with the marginal keratitis uh, have uh, chronic blepharitis, staphylococcal blepharitis. Therefore, we say uh, those infiltrates are caused by the hypersensitivity reaction to the uh, staphylococcal exotoxins and C1 proteins. Uh, uh, and uh, one another thing, when we do culture uh, from the same lesion of the cornea, we will not find any staphylococcus or any bacteria or any other organism in the culture. What we can find is uh, the uh, Organism or staphylococcus is going to be lit from mid margin. So the staphylococcus itself is present in the lit margin, but not in the infiltrate itself. That is why we say it's going to be a hypersensitivity reaction, it's going to be caused by the antigen uh, antibody complex and also the lymphocytes. And uh, the diagnosis. Uh, a mild discomfort is going to be their redness, deformation, and these are going to be the uh, uh, bilateral. Uh, the signs of uh, uh, most uh, uh, common one is going to be chronic blepharitis. Uh, when you see the lid margins, uh, you are going to see the, the, uh, the, some casts or some uh, materials in the uh, 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 eye, eyelashes. Uh, so, you know all the findings about blepharitis. So, you are going to see a chronic blepharitis are going to be present. This is going to be a more common or typical sign for marginal keratitis. And also, the passion of complete epithelial fatigue is going to be in the deterior part of the cornea. This is something you have learned about uh, blepharitis. Uh, so, epithelial erosions or epithelial, complete epithelial. Uh, fatigue is going to be present in the inferior part of the cornea. This is another sign for marginal keratitis. This is also because of chronic blepharitis. And another uh, one which uh, confirms the diagnosis is going to be subepithelial marginal infiltrates. Uh, these marginal infiltrates are going to confirm our diagnosis with the other signs. Chronic blepharitis is present. Sometimes uh, in the inferior part of the cornea, we see complete epithelial fatigue, and also in, with, these, with these two, there is also a subepithelial marginal infiltrate, or some more uh, locations of subepithelial marginal infiltrates are present. This is going to be the confirmation of our diagnosis. And this is going to be separated from the limbus by a clear zone, and also. Uh, localized uh, the part of uh, adjacent uh, connective wire is going to be hyperemic and that's going to 
uh, confirm our diagnosis. So do not forget chronic fluid fracture is present, and from fusion fatigue in most cases is present. And with this, even marginal fatigue traits are present, then we say just marginal keratitis. And this is a, a picture of uh, marginal infiltrate. You see, this is the radar benefit. That picture is not very really clear. This is going to be the clear zoom, and you see a localized hyperemia uh, is also present. With these signs, you will also see uh, if you examine the lymph margins, you will also find the signs of chronic blepharitis. And also, if you, in some cases, the inferior part of the corner, you are going to see. So this, these are <coughs> are going to confirm your diagnosis. And uh, another uh, sign, uh, uh, if there are epithelial defects, if they are present, they are going to be smaller than the size of the infiltrate. For example, there is an infiltrate, uh, an, an area of infiltrate like this, but epithelial defect is going to be smaller than the infiltrate itself. Infiltrate is under the epithelium, and the defect is in the superior part. So the superior part, epithelium defect is going to be smaller than that under uh, subepithelial infiltrate. That's going to be shown to you in the picture. Coalescence and circumferential spree is going to be present. At first time, you are going to see one, uh, for example, one lesion here, one lesion here, and one here. And by the time you are going to join, coalescence means join. You are going to be joined and circumferential spree is going to be shown or where it's going to be seen. It's going to spree, it's going to become larger with time. And uh, according to arterial chamber reaction, it's going to be very less or not be present. Uh, arterial chamber reaction, for example, cell and flare, these things are, going to, are not going to be present, or hyperfunal, these things are not going to be present. If you see them, you may think about the other conditions. For example, if hyperfin is present, you may think about fungal bacterial uh, keratitis. Uh, uh, you may think about them, but they are not present in marginal keratitis. And this is a good example of a large uh, subepithelial uh, uh, sub epithelial infiltrate, but a smaller, smaller uh, epithelial defect. You see, this uh, the stent area uh, is uh, the epithelial defect was stent in the fluorescein. Uh, but the uh, underlying uh, epithelial, uh, subepithelial infiltrate is large. So this is another sign that you may consider in marginal keratitis. These epithelial defects are not present in all the cases. But in some cases, epithelial defect may be present, but underlying a large subepithelial infiltrate is going to be seen. And this picture you see, there is a large, uh, it means at first it was small, maybe in some parts. With the time, they, they did coalescence occurred, or they joined, and circumferential spree occurred. Uh, and also, you see the hyperemia, connectival hyperemia, and it's a very large lesion. This part of this large lesion, you only, you do not see any uh, arterial ch uh, ch chamber reaction. It means cell flare and those things are not present. That's why we see the iris really clearly. Iris is seen very clearly. That is uh, to say the, the differenti differentiation between mm, the uh, bacterial keratitis, fungal keratitis, and from other conditions is by this arterial ch chamber reaction is going to be realness or not present. Okay, marginal keratitis without treatment is going to be resolved uh, within one to four weeks, uh, depending to the severity of the, of the problem. If it is very small or if not severe, it is going to be, without treatment, it is going to be resolved within one week. Uh, if it is severe, it is going to be uh, for four weeks, uh, uh, maybe uh, it is going to be uh, resolved. Uh, and uh, sometimes, or in occasion, occasional cases, uh, there is going to be superficial, mild scar thinning are going to be present, and sometimes a mild anus is going to be present. That's I'm going to show you in the picture when the little street comes back. back. Uh, thinning can occur, uh, 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 also, uh, anus, a mild anus is going to occur 
and these things can occur. And one another important thing, uh, new vessels in the eyes do to occur in some cases. If the case is severe or persistent or for a long time, you are going to see the new vessels in the iris. But with the resolution, resolution of the marginal keratitis, that is going to be also resolved. This is good. This is good uh, if it results. If it doesn't, maybe the, uh, you know, the reviews that has very bad consequences. Uh, so by the resolution of the marginal keratitis, those vessels are going to also be disappeared. <coughs> and this is a, a picture of palmus, it's mild palmus, and also some scarring is, going to, uh, is present here. Uh, this is a, uh, that is rare, sometimes palmus is going to occur, not in other cases. And uh, then uh, the treatment, uh, although we say that it's going to be resolved uh, spontaneously without treatment, but if you uh, apply or administer, uh, big top, uh, topical uh, streets uh, such as fluorimethanol or fluorimethanol, but fluorimethanol should be in small, uh, in less concentration, 0.5 percent. If it is 0.1 percent, that's going to be high concentration. So uh, these uh, can be uh, given four times daily for one to two weeks, uh, and these are going to accelerate the uh, resolution. Uh, and sometimes. They are going to be also combined with topical antibiotics because streptococcus is already present there, and if epithelial defects occur, there is a chance for a secondary infection. So you may also combine some topical antibiotics uh, to it. And uh, also, tetracycline, uh, for example, dutracycline, uh, that is, is going to have an effect for both of them for blepharitis and also for this marginal. Uh, uh, marginal keratitis. For both of them, we can also administer the trust cleans, but we know, we all know that they are contraindicated in children breastfeeding and pregnant, pregnant women. You should prevent them, and instead of them, the atrocity is a good chance. We all know this. So, for marginal keratitis, since all you did is chronic blepharitis, present specialist, final focal, it is uh, uh, logical to also give some oral doxycycline to the patient. And the other uh, uh, necessary uh, measurements for uh, belief prices are also going to be considered. For example, lead hygiene and, and other considerations for the belief prices. And another issue, these are small, small issues, both of them are going to be explained today. Another issue is uh, flexion losses. This is a little similar to marginal keratitis, but it is Different, but the causation is some, some, somewhat similar. It's again a self limiting disease. Flexibility is also a uh, self limiting disease, but maybe may uh, severe in some cases. Uh, sometimes uh, with the flexibility, this perforation is possible. So it is uh, most of the time self limiting, but sometimes it, be, it will be very severe and perforation may even occur. And uh, there is a difference between the developing countries and developed countries. In developed countries, it is mostly caused by hypersensitivity, at the same like commercial keratitis, hypersensitivity reaction to streptococcal antigens, and sometimes with Rosacea. But in developed countries, since uh, the prevalence of uh, uh, tuberculosis in hemantic infestations are more, uh, it is also caused by tuberculosis or hemantic in, uh, uh, infections. Uh, in the developed countries, these are uh, very less, these infections are not present. In developing countries, they are present. So, uh, in developed countries, it is going to be caused by spinocrocal or rosacea, uh, hypersensitivity to those. But in developed countries, including them, these are going to be also the causation. But still, the, uh, the literature says that there is uh, uh, some other organisms or some other compositions or are also going to be present. But these, these four are going to be the common ones. Okay, again, the symptoms of the photophobia, like I mentioned, the more bilipharospasm, they are mostly often in the children or young adults. Uh, in the signs, there's going to be a, a small white lumbar or conjunctival medial, and that is again going to be associated with the local hyperemia of the conjunctiva. 
a small module, white module you are going to see in the Olympus or in the connectiva. With that, the hyperemia is going to be present there. And uh, another important thing, uh, the, if it is in the limbus, if it is in the conjunctiva, it's going to be less severe than the limbal one. If it is in the limbus, it's also possible to extend to the cornea. And then coronal complications is going to occur. So uh, limbal uh, flattening is more severe than the con uh, conjunctival flattening. You see, this is our limbal flattening. You see the local hyperemia, and sometimes it's going to extend into the cornea and give some coronal complications. Uh, <clears throat> and this is going to be coronal flattening. But it means uh, originally it was also in the limbus, but it proceeded to the cornea. And the cornea is also in one thing. But again, it is uh, spontaneous resolution usually occurs uh, two to three weeks. It's the same level of marginal catharsis. Uh, and uh, the bad thing with uh, flattening is uh, in the lesion is held uh, that is going to leave a triangular limbal base. This means the base of the uh, thinning or scarring is going to be in the limbus. Uh, this is going to be, the scar is going to be associated. This scar is going to be associated with thinning also, sometimes perforation and also vascularization is going to be present with the, this scar. So this is the bad thing about uh, flexion losses, uh, sometimes perforation even has. The held one, when it helps, it's going to leave a vascularized uh, scar with thin, and sometimes even perforation. And uh, sometimes a, a, a single, very large necrotizing lesion, or sometimes multiple lesions <coughs> may be present. So it doesn't mean that flaccinolosis always should be only one. Sometimes you will see many lesions, or sometimes you will see one large lesion, one large flaccin in the uh, the limbus or in the conjunctiva. Sometimes more of them are going to be present. This is a picture, of this is a very bad looking picture you see. Uh, it is here the held one, uh, it's not the active one. After healing, it leaves this kind of scarring. You see there is a uh, vascularization to the cornea. If, uh, in this patient, it's good, it's a little away from the visual axis, uh, uh, but if it is uh, uh, in the visual axis, it's going to also affect the vision. The patient is going to uh, be problems with vision. Uh, so the vessels are there and the scar is there. Sometimes in this picture, uh, the thinning is not shown because it's anterior posterior. Uh, but if you uh, also do uh, the thickness of the cornea in the state lab, you will also see that thinning is present. Okay, uh, in flatulosis investigation, the most important thing you, are, you have to investigate is tuberculosis, especially in our country. In our country, if you see a flattened patient, or you, uh, you, you have to do some investigations for tuberculosis or uh, refer the patient to tuberculosis TB center for investigations. Uh, because this is a, a, a factor in the development of this in our country is also included in, the, in that. And the treatment is uh, again the same like the marginal keratitis, a short course of tropical strip is going to accelerate the healing is going to be often uh, uh, combined with, again with the antibiotics. Uh, and uh, sometimes if it is uh, recurrent and troublesome, and the lesion is very large, again you, uh, you can also give some tetracyclines, for example, doxycycline. Uh, and some, uh, sometimes again there's also blephrites is going to be present, so doxycycline is going to be beneficial for both of them. If the lesion is very large, sometimes we say the lesion is going to be very large or multiple lesions are going to be present. And thank you for your active listening. It was Alex.